Hello and welcome back to CS631 Advanced Programming in the Unix Environment. In our last video, we saw communications across the internet using datagrams over IPv4. We observed how our clients sent UDP packets to the remote server without knowing whether the packet would be delivered or not. In this video, we'll repeat the same setup, but this time we're going to use a stream socket, meaning we'll use TCP to establish a sequenced, reliable two-way byte stream. In addition, we'll use IPv6 as the network protocol. But you should find that both the reader and the sender programs still look very similar to our UDP version from the last video. As before, we also use our good friend TCP dump to inspect the packets on the wire. Here, let's take a look. First, the sender. As before, we accept a port number, then create a socket. This time, we are passing pfinet6 and soc stream to the socket syscall. Next, we are looking up the IPv6 address of the given hostname and use that to fill in our soc address in 6, once again converting the port number from host to network byte order using N2HS. Next, and this is where we have a slight difference to the UDP sender, we call connect. This will initiate the stream connection to the remote host. If successful, we then simply use write to write our message to the socket descriptor, close it and exit. Our reader also looks similar to before, at least in the beginning. We create our socket Fill in the struct soc adder in 6, letting the kernel pick the IP address and port, and then bind the socket. Just like before, we determine the port number selected by the kernel via get soc name and print it after converting it from network byte order to host byte order. But now here's where our stream reader begins to differ a bit from our UDP reader. We call listen which will specify a willingness to accept incoming connections as well as a queue limit of how many pending connections we are willing to handle. With that backlog in place, we then enter a forever loop waiting for connections. The stream connections we need to call accept to extract the first connection request on the queue of pending connections. This then creates a new socket from which we can read data. In this program, we do not simply read a single message, but instead continue to read data, showing up on the socket until we reach EOF, and print each message together with the client's IP address to standard out. Okay, so now, just as before, we will log into a remote system where we build our TCP reader, and once again create a second shell to display our network connection. When we run our reader, we see that our program is now listening on port 61174, and Netstat confirms that this socket is open only for IPv6. With the reader listening, we can now send our data. And there we go. Our reader prints out what we sent, prefixed with our client IP address. But note that our reader did not terminate. It is now again waiting for a new connection, so we can send the same message again. If we interrupt the reader and then try to send the same message again, we'll this time get an error, as a connection-oriented protocol or a call to connect will now fail, since nothing is listening on the remote side. Connection refused. Let's also repeat what we did for UDP and capture our packets using TCP dump. Here we start our packet collection in the bottom left. Start a new reader in the upper right. And send a new message to the server.
Now we stop the reader and try to send again. Okay, let's rearrange our windows again so we can better inspect the network packets. There we go. Now up here in the upper right, we see the TCP three-way handshake when we first send our message. The sender sends a SYN packet, the reader replies with a SYNAC, and the sender transmits NAC. After that, the client sends its message in this packet with a push flag set and then closes the connection, sending a fin with a server replying with its fenac before our connection is completely torn down. So all of these packets correlate to our sending message once over here. The next, the failed attempt to send the message, shows our client trying to establish a connection with a send packet, but the server replying with a reset, indicating that the connection is refused. So this connection setup and teardown is a bit expensive. So let's see if we can send multiple messages in the same connection. For that, we'll rearrange our win windows again to the initial setup. Then we'll start a new reader Start a new TCP dump. And then send the message once more. Oops, wrong port. So we get another connection refused. Let's fix that. Okay, so a message was sent as before, and Netstat shows our open port since our client just connected, sent data, and disconnected again. But now, let's use the telnet command to establish a TCP connection. Now, when we run Netstat, we see that we have one established connection, as well as a still available listening socket, illustrating the concept of the connection backlog we established via the listen syscall. Now when we send data via Telnet, we can send multiple messages without having to establish a new connection each time, and only when we quit Telnet is the connection terminated. Let's look again at the network packets. So here we see our initial failed connection. Then our three-way handshake, the standard message, and the connection teardown from our sender program. After that, we see the three-way handshake from the telnet command, which then sends each message using the same connection before terminating only after we quit. Okay, so we've seen how to establish and use a TCP connection via a stream socket in the INET6 domain. As before, we know the connections are now asymmetrical. But unlike with datagram sockets, for a stream socket, we create a separate message socket for each request. Our initial socket must be marked as being willing to accept connections by us calling listen, which also establishes a backlog of connections we're willing to accept. Once we've done that, we can then pick off incoming connections using the accept syscall, which may block if no clients are connecting. 
We've also seen that each connection does require a full three-way handshake, thin, thin, egg, egg, and teardown, thin, egg, thin, egg. So altogether, this program has helped us understand stream sockets much better, but it also leaves plenty of room for enhancements and additional exercises. You can start by updating the program to use send or send to instead of write and see what, if anything, changes about your program. We've now seen programs using IPv4 only, as well as those that use IPv6 only. But more often than not, you'll encounter systems that have both an IPv4 and an IPv6 address. Can you update the UDP and TCP examples to handle both? We've seen that our stream reader allows multiple clients to connect, but how does it handle messages delivered to us by multiple simultaneously connected clients? What happens if a client is still in the backlog and then disconnects before we've consumed the messages sent to us? And finally, if you have multiple clients, just how many can you have? We know that our backlog specified to listen has to do with this, but what happens if you have more than that number of clients? In our next video, we'll follow up on some of these questions, so give it a try and play around with the code. Until next time, thanks for watching.